Here are some of the most important Excel functions you need to know how to perform to have a successful and efficient career as a financial analyst. We are going to start off here with a few basic financial statement tasks. You can see we have preliminary income statement numbers for uh, three years in the past. We're gonna show you exactly how uh, these were copied down for an example of what the 2021 numbers could have looked like, how to use the same formulas to quickly calculate what our 2022 numbers should have been, only working off of three or four input variables, and then how to make projections into uh, future years on what we should expect for our financials. Keep in mind that we're gonna be formatting this financial statement to look a lot nicer later on in the video when we talk about macros. First, I'm going to make bold the input variables, meaning the variables on this Excel sheet that we needed to have gotten from our company's results. And the quickest way to make the text in any cell bold in Excel is to hit control and then the B button. Our revenue of our company, the cost of our goods sold, I hit hold down control and then click B. These are calculated and our inputs and our income is a calculation. So our input variables are now in bold. Using the input variables, we can now see how the calculations to each of these line items is done on the income statement. Let's say our revenue had grown to 300,000 in this year. Our costs of goods sold was 165,000. Our gross profit is simply the income you brought in minus the cost of the goods that uh, you sold to earn that income. So we are simply gonna click the equal sign up arrow twice to select that cell, minus up arrow once to select this cell, enter, and we get a calculation that used a short formula to give us our gross profit for that year. Another input variable would be our SG&A expenses. We're gonna assume they were 34,500. And then our EBITDA, earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization, is simply our gross profit. So I click the equal sign, two cells above, minus, click the up arrow to get to one cell above, click enter, and you have our EBITDA for that year. Getting into three more input variables, we're gonna assume our depreciation actually stayed the same now. Our interest expense continued to decline a bit because maybe our outstanding note has decreased in balance and so we're paying less interest. And our tax bill is uh, slightly higher since we have a higher gross profit. The final quick formula that we're gonna use for this short income statement example is that our net income is equal to uh, our EBITDA, so I'm gonna arrow up arrow four times to get to that cell minus sign up arrow three times minus sign up arrow two times minus sign up arrow once and click enter and you get the calculation for our net income for the year now for the year that just ended 2022 we want to only enter our input variables and apply the same formulas that were used in the prior year to quickly calculate the important financial outputs of this income statement so again we're typing in input variables we're going to assume our revenues rose again we are going to assume our cost of goods sold increased just about commensurately. And instead of typing in the formula here, I'm gonna mouse over, and I know that mousing over to cells is considered a little bit barbarian, but I still like to use a mouse in Excel. It's definitely not the quickest way to go about it. I can't sit here and say that I'm the best person to learn all of the uh, keyboard shortcuts from uh, when using Microsoft Excel. I think this is actually easier and more intuitive. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna be real and say this is the way I would do this. If you want to see those extremely quick keyboard shortcuts that you can practice and learn to ultimately become more efficient over time, watch some other videos about the best Excel keyboard shortcuts. But in this case, if we hover over the lower right corner of this cell, all I simply do is double click and drag across. And what that did is that it copied the formula in the cell here that we used in the prior cell but you can see that we are not using the E column numbers anymore, we're using the F column because that's the column we draw, drug the formula to. So with our gross profit of $150,000 that year, we're gonna assume our SG&A expenses uh, grew to about this number, I'm just making it up at this point. And again, to carry over a calculation, I hover over the bottom right corner, drag to the right. Depreciation expense, since I wanna assume it stayed the same, I can actually drag that number. Interest expense, I bet since I've been decreasing each year by 1,000, I can drag, yep, it automatically calculated what I wanted to do. Tax bill, we're gonna say we had to pay $32,400 in taxes, 32,400, we'll go with that number instead. And instead of writing out or entering the four variable formula, I'm just gonna do the same, drag, carry the variables across and get our net income calculation for what would be last year. Now, to make our forward estimates, we need to include some important assumptions in our financial statements. I don't think I want that to be bold. There are many ways we could build out what we are going to assume these various numbers are gonna grow by. I'm gonna use an extremely simple example for the purposes of this video and just have a revenue growth percentage 
and a cost growth number. If we think our revenue is increasing by about 30% a year, but our costs are growing by about 20%, that would be a pretty efficient business growth trajectory. So now to apply that growth assumption to our revenue field, I'm gonna use an equal sign to start a new formula, left arrow over to select this cell, times one plus the growth rate that we're assuming, close parenthesis and equal and sorry, enter, and you'll get the automatic application of, of the revenue growth figure. We're gonna do the same things here. This equals the prior year's value times, open parenthesis, since we have to do a one plus, select the cell down here, close parenthesis and enter, and we get our assumed cost of goods sold using our cost growth uh, variable of 20% per year. Going down to a couple of other of our other input variables, I'm going to carry these numbers forward by highlighting cells uh, and sliding one over. There may be a slightly quicker way to do this for taxes. I'm going to actually do similar to what we've been doing above, one plus the uh, growth rate on our costs. SG&A expenses here, uh, that is a selling expense, so we are going to use a similar uh, function to what we used below. Our two calculation cells here, I'm gonna copy over the formulas that we used previously, and same for net income. Now I forgot about one important step when entering the formulas that work off of our two assumptions here. I need to lock these uh, variables so that if I were to project these cells into the future, it's not going to assume we need additional revenue and cost growth assumptions. I wanna stay locked in on this specific cell for any other work I do with this formula. And we need to use the F4 key uh, when highlighted over any of the selected variables here. Similarly here, I'm gonna click F4, enter, and uh, F4, enter. Now that we have a streamlined way to calculate our assumed earnings numbers or our expected earnings numbers and expense numbers for this year, I can simply drag everything over and it's going to project all of our assumed growth rates on our income and our expenses to get us an end of year net income calculation. I can do it again for the next two years. Now, I don't know if assuming a 30% growth rate on our revenues is gonna be fair for every year into the future. You can see that this business is growing very well, doing almost a million dollars in sales in 2026, but many businesses may grow at this rate and we're gonna go with these numbers. Another very valuable tool that you'll use in Excel is if statements. There are very just different forms of if statements, but in this video, I'll show you a really simple way to apply an if statement that can be helpful in any potential modeling work that you'll be doing. We're gonna assume that in our business, we have a net margin goal of, uh, we're gonna say it's 20%. And, and by the way, I just entered uh, this cell uh, format to be a percentage. That's why you don't see 0.2 and you see 20%. Maybe our manager is asking us to identify which years we actually hit our net margin goal. And if you don't know what net margin is, it means the percentage of your total revenues that you actually ended up earning at the end of the year in net income. So to test on any given year, if this number is greater than or equal to 20%, of this number, we're gonna use a simple if statement by writing equals if, and then an open parenthesis to start it. The logical test is we want our net income figure to be greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to 20% times our revenue figure. I'm gonna close that parenthesis, parenthesis, and you can see in my directions, now I need a comma and then a value if true. My value if true is I just want it to say yes. When using a text output for one of these values, you start with a quotation mark. I'll just say yes. And then another comma. Now you can see we're highlighting over the value if, uh, if false, meaning if the net margin is less than 20%. Quotation mark, no, close quotation mark, close the parentheses for the whole if statement and click enter. Now, since that formula is used in this cell, I'll simply hover over the bottom right corner, slide my mouse across and copy that formula across each application. Now you can see in the 2024 estimate, all of these have switched to column H and we're assuming that uh, our net margin is going to be greater than or equal to 20% in that calendar year. Now to use one other type of if statement that can be very beneficial. What if our manager asks us, in the years where we didn't hit our net margin goal, how far were we off or what was that net margin? We can have this table calculate the, what the net margin actually was in any year where we didn't miss the goal. And maybe we're assuming that if we are hitting the goal, we're fine with whatever it is, we don't care. 
the point of this exercise is just to show you how to use an if statement to run a calculation if a certain condition is met. So our next row will just be titled actual here. And uh, we're gonna say, we're just using another singular if statement. So equals if, logical test is gonna be if this cell equals the word yes, uh, then the value of true is just spit out a, a blank carrot because I don't care if, if we actually hit our net margin goal and I'm just going to use the prior calculations to tell me if I did. Now the value if false output is going to be if this cell does not say yes or in this case if the cell says no, I want it to tell me what that net margin is. So I want it to calculate for me. Uh, we're going to say it's going to be equal to the net income, sorry, the net income for that year divided by the profits, close the parenthesis on that calculation, close the parenthesis on the whole if statement. And you can see the error I had. I needed to get rid of the equal sign here. I wasn't starting a new formula, that was my mistake. But still, C14 divided by C6, we get an output uh, of null because our answer was yes. But if I use one more example, we can see, oh, our net margin was only 17%. And I can use this income statement across the board. I'm gonna highlight uh, these two cells and reduce the number of parentheses, or sorry, uh, decimal places I'm seeing. So when the answer was yes, we get a null output. If the answer is no, we actually get Excel to run us a calculation of what was that net margin. Finally, one of the most time-saving Excel tools you can use as a financial analyst is in applying a macro to any Excel spreadsheet. We're gonna use a very simple example of a macro to show you how they are used and what they can be beneficial for in this example. I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're gonna leave this income statement ugly and apply some formatting later on. So what I'm gonna do is start recording a macro, format all of this to look a bit nicer, and then I'll show you in a similar Excel sheet how we can just use that macro, click go, and it will make the entire sheet look exactly how we want it in a nicely formatted way, much quicker than formatting every line. This can be extremely helpful if you're working on large models in Excel and you wanna apply the same formatting to one sheet to multiple sheets, a macro is gonna be the best way to go about it. So to record a macro, you start off in the developer tab. You need to have macros actually turned on in your Microsoft Excel settings. Check out some other videos or just Google how to do that. Uh, and we're gonna start recording a macro. The name is gonna be formatting. And I won't add a shortcut key right now. Apply to this work workbook. Don't really need a description. Now we are recording. So let's say I wanted my uh, year columns to be bolded and the text to be larger. Now there are always keyboard shortcuts to apply these settings rather than going up to font size and clicking the size you like. Again, I said I am not the most proficient Excel user and this is how I literally do it. So I wanna show you what I think is a pretty, you know, pretty simple way. And especially if you're applying a macro, once you uh, do it once, you don't need to do it again. So being a little bit slower in the application of your settings during the macro isn't the worst thing in the world. Let's say the income statement, we want to be merged and centered across here. And we want the text to be blue and you know we want the whole thing to be a lot bigger. We can do that. Maybe we want it bolded to control B. Now maybe we want uh, spacing between or sorry, after our subtotals. So I'm gonna highlight the level below, right click and insert. Same thing here. I'm gonna highlight below, right click and insert. And finally for net income, I'll make an I'll make an extra insert just to get to that final net number. Right click and insert. Net income is the most important variable here. We're gonna make it bolder and we'll actually make the text larger. Let me make this uh, A column bigger to fit that. We want dollar figures, let's say, right? So we're gonna highlight the cells, go up to the dollar sign, make these dollar figures. Uh, let's see, I need the cells to be a bit larger or the text size to be smaller. Let me do this. Yes, everything now fits. I know it's a little bit ugly, but just for the sake of this example. Or maybe we want to apply some conditional formatting. And so we're highlighting any years in which our net income goal, sorry, our net margin goal was not met. So I'm gonna highlight this cell, go to conditional formatting, and we're gonna say highlight the cells that uh, are equal to the word no with Whatever setting they wanna give us, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna copy over my conditional formatting. And now you can see that we are, our attention is getting drawn to any years in which management felt like our business wasn't operating as well as it should have. Okay, 
This Excel sheet is still very, very ugly. Maybe I wanna do a little more to it here just before I say that we are totally done. We could, we could edit the table to cut out these ugly headings, but I think we've gotten the point across. I'm gonna stop recording the macro here. Let's say in some alien planet, we actually like how this income statement looks at this point. Now we're on a blank sheet for another page in our Excel document. This is actually an exact copy of what we were working on earlier, but for the purposes of the example, maybe this is a different company set or a different business segment's income statement, and we want to apply the same settings. I'm gonna click the macros tab. It quickly applied the same formatting that we just worked on on our prior sheet to this one. So if you made this thing actually look good, you can see how applying a macro to a blank sheet could save you a ton of time on all the formatting changes that you might wanna to do to make this thing presentable. Keep in mind that these introductory functions can really be applied in more advanced ways for some very detailed work in Excel. So if you can learn these tricks and apply them quickly in your own work in this tool, it can make your life a heck of a lot easier moving forward.